I've just come from a session which has uh, looked at the activity of immune checkpoint inhibitors in bladder cancer. Uh, it's been maybe the, the biggest um, bladder cancer session we've had for a while uh, in that we saw activity of three drugs uh, in two different settings. Uh, we also saw uh, a lot of biomarker work um, and the session was uh, initially uh, focused on um, a new area, the frontline setting. So previously we've had otezolizumab in the second line setting. Uh, and now we're looking at frontline setting in patients who are not eligible for classic cisplatin-based chemotherapy. These patients tend to have a survival historically in the region of about eight or nine months. And uh, the day we saw today with the tezolizumab showed survival in the region of 15 months. Uh, pretty different, <laughs> yeah, really good. So uh, um, I look at that and think this is, for me, it's a, a big change in the way um, we're going to approach our patients um, because um, uh, the drugs are really well tolerated. Um, the data is relatively small, the number of you know, 120 patients, but it's an indicator to us that actually immune therapy may be best placed right up front um, and not uh, wait for, you know, for, fa for, for chemotherapy failure. And so this is, um, this is going to prompt a lot of new trials, um, which um, we can talk about in a minute. The second thing I think we saw was other drugs. Um, so we saw nivolumab uh, and duvalumab. Um, and we saw activity in the same space as atezolizumab previously in those individuals who failed chemotherapy. We showed activity for both of those drugs. And the activity actually, I mean, the, the, the detail of the studies is quite complicated because one enriches a bit and the other one doesn't, and the biomarkers are measured in different ways. So it's very, very difficult to do cross-trial comparisons. But when you look from the back of the room, the activity of the drugs looks about the same. Um, so it's very difficult at this stage to say this drug's better or worse than that drug. What we can say at the moment is the biomarker story looks complicated in that we saw data today suggesting the, uh, the um, duvalumab biomarker looks, they were there looking at tumour cell expression and immune cell expression. And you look at that and think, mm, that looks kind of good, but we sort of had that previously with other biomarkers. And really we have to test and see how that pans out. And then we saw um, a greyness around the atezolizumab biomarker um, in that it seems to work really well, second line, um, but it didn't seem to work so well front line in this very small cohort. And I'm a bit nervous about you know, saying the biomarker does or doesn't work. I don't think that's the right approach. I think we're, we're taking relatively small patient samples. We're looking at historical data and we're making very broad assumptions. And what I think we do know is that we need to do a lot more work with this. And it's my personal feeling that this biomarker story will move on from here. I think pdl one expression will be one thing that we'll look at. So in summary, um, today I think was uh, maybe the biggest day in bladder cancer for a long time. Um, Atezolizumab was approved in bladder cancer just recently um, which in the US, which is a huge deal, the first drug to be approved in the US for ages. And today we saw two other drugs with great activity. Um, we know we have a whole load of new trials coming through as well. We now have frontline great activity. So I think we can start talking about immune therapy replacing, potentially replacing chemotherapy as the go-to option for patients in the future, so really exciting.